Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woki, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. What am I going to be doing today? Well, today I wanted to talk about the thing that was supposed to show up with Advanced Quest 4, <laughs> which decided not to show up, which is the Go Learning with Manga collaboration pre-release campaign. Don't know why they held it back for whatever reason, because as you can see here, in Japan, this release April 20th, and then this release April 20th, and this all happened when this banner ended, and it was also during this event, so I don't know if the what, why they're waiting, so, weird. I was actually kind of, uh, funny enough, I was like done with work, I was like, I guess I'm just gonna have to be late, because I had a really rough day at work yesterday, I was like, I guess I'll just be late, and then when the day, when the day roll hit, I was like, oh, it didn't show up? Weird. So anyway, let's talk about it. This is the Fugo Learning with Manga collab. Get ready for Super Bunyan. She's about to show up any day now. This should show up in a couple days from now. Uh, the bang campaign that they're going to have, it's probably, you know when it's probably going to happen? It's going to end whenever the current thing that they've got going on in NA is going to end, which I think is the... There's like a long campaign going on. Maybe the same day as the Support New Masters... Let me look on JP when support new masters ended. Cause I think it happened um, March, ended April 30th. No, it lasted a long time. Never mind. What do I know? Let's talk about the campaign. So the main campaign, there will be a login bonus. It will uh, be there until May. F it was there until May 5th in JP, which in terms of days, it was there for one, two, three, basically kind of th two weeks and a day. Um, the requirement to actually get the login is that you have to have cleared Fuyuki, which is very easy to do. And you'll get a silver apple, a golden apple, a quartz, a silver apple, a golden apple, and then two quartz, and boom, that's it. In terms of other campaigns, all Ember Gathering quests will be one half AP, two times chance to get a super and great suck when strengthening servants, two times friend points when using them, uh, when using as a support, four... Four, uh, strength, the servant strengthening quest at one half AP, interludes at one half AP. Uh, I should just say half AP. <laughs> the applicable servants are all the ones that will be related to the Learning with Manga collaboration. So, literally, a butt ton of units. Um, too many for me to list. Literally, anyone that ever showed up in the span of time of Learning with Manga will be there. Um,. The Da Vinci Workshop Return of the Paul Bunyan Bunny Costume, which is one of my favorite costume dresses, will be there. It'll be familiar if you have cleared E uh, Pluribus Plur Unum, but if you can't wait for it, you can just go ahead and spend fair five rare mana prisms. And when you do clear the America Singularity, you'll get this back in your gift box as a here you go. You can have it back now. Uh, there will be a Learning with a Manga Volume 2 quest. In it, you can get this just by getting, again, clear the America Singularity and you'll get this for free. And if you already paid for it, um, you'll get it refunded as soon as you clear the America Singularity, where you can get the craft essence, the sexy pinup, that's right, what everyone was asking for, more sexy mash CEs. Rio saw what the people wanted, and he provided it. Just a very simple battle to get the real Rio um, craft essence, and all it does is give you Master EXP by 50, but still, I think it's actually very funny art. It's a funny idea for it as well. Um, from the start of this event until, I guess, the end of it, after you have all the Statesman quests are unlocked for players who have cleared the America Singularity, in case, uh, in case you have exchanged it already for permits in the Da Vinci Shop, you'll get refunded your um, rare mana prisms. Previously, it would cost five, but just like I've mentioned beforehand, if you already spent it on it, it's free now. You get that five back as soon as you cleared America. And this is how you actually get Bunyan. It's a cute little story. It has a very weird twist ending to it. Very funny. I really like it. Um, features a lot of cameos from other American Frontier um, servants that will never get make it into Fago because Fago hates America, <laughs> the American servants refuses to give them to us that's why he, they gave us all the american presidents in edison uh and we were deprived of an abraham lincoln or george washington uh but yeah the, just clearing this will get you paul bunyan and that's good enough i love paul bunyan even though paul bunyan is french canadian as they mention here uh still a north american icon of course because canada is part of north america duh um yeah clear it pretty good 
You also get the Sil CE here, which is the Learning with Manga Vago CE, which is one I really like. It's got really cool art. Or, I, I consider this cool. It has a lot of cool little stuff in it. A lot of characters who appeared in Learning with Manga and stuff like that. Uh, next. Summoning campaign. There will be a banner related to it. The servant. Uh, this I'm going to go into more detail when they actually reveal it. Because this is going to be another case where it's going to be step by step. So I'm actually going to do what I wanted to do originally. Which is how to handle these banners. Which is releasing a video the day before they kind of come out. So just in case I'll talk about... Tamamo Lancer and um, Helena in detail here, just in case that their banners are go go up. Uh, but here's what it, you can expect from it: Tamamo Lancer, Astolfo Saber, uh, Da Vinci Rider, Da Vinci Caster, Helena Summer, uh, the Pirate Summer, uh, Marie Summer, and Astolfo Regular. The schedule should be Tamamo Lancer and Helena, and then it will be Astolfo and Astolfo, and then it'll be Da Vinci and the Pirates. Uh, and then Da Vinci Adult uh, Caster form with Marie Caster, just to make you double mad when you don't get <laughs> you don't get the five star, you get Marie instead. Though funny enough for me, as I've mentioned beforehand, I do want my fifth MP copy of uh, Summer Marie uh, for personal reasons and no other reason. Uh, the limited rate up craft essences will be all the ones from Rio, like Law of the Jungle, One Flew Over the Cuckoo, Cuckoo's Nest, Happiness is a, like a Warm Puppy. The Quiet and Reserved Pig, the We Are Friends, Brave One, and the Maximum Overdrive. As I mentioned beforehand, Maximum Overdrive, a uh, hell of a movie. Go watch it. A soda machine kills a man by hitting him in the nuts with a soda uh, soda can. Um, worth it alone to get the C for that. Uh, and just, again, I'll circle back on the summoning campaign, but that's a brief look at it. In terms of ser servant strengthenings, we've got... Uh, one's for Altera, one for, uh, Summer Tamamo, one for the Pirates, one for Helena, and then one for regular Pirates. Um, Altera going from Natural Body EX to Perfect Construct, which is she gets an MP gauge finally, and an increase to critical damage for three turns, which I think this finally lets her, um, be able to loop. I think, because it gives 30%, yes, so it would technically be possible with Oberon to loop. Uh, the Goddess Metamorphosis, it increased on crit damage for 3 turns, increased to own cr uh, critical star drop rate for 3 turns, 500% chance to grant self a delay debuff, 500% chance to stun for self for 1 turn after 1 turn after 1 turn, that the merit has been removed, and then charges on MP gauge, which is a new effect, she did not previously had one, and I think the MP charger has to be 30%. It is. So that is a clear upgrade back in the day when this skill used to be absolutely amazing. It made sense to have the demerit to stun herself. Doesn't really make sense anymore. Uh, that should make her better. Treasure Hunt Ocean Sea charges on MP gauge. That is not enough to save these poor, 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 lovely lesbian pirates. Um... 30% NP, some st crit star absorption, and star bomb in, in it as well with a cooldown of 6. Yeah, not, 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 it is better than what they had previously, but they need more than that because they have the same gimmick as, um, um, the Pickle Man. I can't believe I'm forgetting his name right now. Hijikata. Hijikata, thank you. <laughs> I remember, I always remember him as the Pickle Man, but yeah, it's Hijikata. Um, where you need to be really low on HP, and Hijikata at least has the benefit of being a Berserker, so when this does hit, it hits hard. Um, and they're archers, and as you can see here, a lot of their stuff is weirdly, like, buff-focused on men. So not the greatest unit. They do have a Grant Self Gut status for one time, which is a permanent Guts, which is nice. But then 500% reduce ohm debuff resistance by 50% for three turns is a <laughs> terrible effect to have. If you want to know how old these are, they get 25.5% on level 10. That's ridiculous. They need more buffs, which is a shame because I like Anne Bon and Mary Reed. I think they're cool pirates, but it's not enough. Next, the Sonic Kumara Wheel. It deals damage to all enemies and then increases party's MP gauge, which is a new effect. I believe this is her Noble Phantasm. Uh, I am correct in that. Always good to do a little bit more damage. How much is the party MP gauge clear? 10%? 
It's not much. It's kind of... Eh. Mm, it probably helps with NP gain, now that I think about it, if I remember right. I'm gonna test it out, because I actually really like Summer Helena. And uh, I've always been kind of sad that I actually don't use her very much, because I have better options for it. And she can never do enough damage, as because I only have her at MP1. So I think I'm actually gonna see if I can get something going with her here. Like, yeah, 40% arts for one turn, it's like... Again, some of these old Summer designs are really funny, because some of them are built like Summer Saber. And they are so insanely good that they barely ever, the one time they get a buff, you actually question why did you buff them. They were already perfectly solid as was. And then you get units like this. Which are like, yeah, they were probably okay at the time, but they are not not up to snuff nowadays. A 20% at party MP gauge and 5 crit stars is nothing. And then a cooldown of 8 just to throw ice on the water. Ice on the water, just to throw water on the fire. And for the regular pirates, they get Dazzling Pirate Princess, which is a gain in crit stars. Um, 25. I believe their old version of the skill gave nothing. Correct. Just 100% crit damage for a single turn. That still stays, but now that they can actually get crit stars, so you can actually use this in some kind of way. Um, they still have this gut status. Yeah, and they're, I think, target deals damage to one enemy. Okay. And then they also have the same thing of damage based on own remaining HP. I didn't realize that both of them. To be fair, I don't use this card very often, so... Um, still, nice for them to get buffs. Just give them some more, I would say. <laughs> would be nice. Or maybe I'm, I'm wrong and maybe some of these buffs actually make these cards insane. Feel free to let me know, but I'm pretty positive... All of them kind of stay the same, except for Tamamo and Altera, who get much better in terms of... It, this, it's a much easier to see how this is a better upgrade for Altera compared to what these kind of units got. So, that's just my opinion on it, though. Alright, we circled back around. Let's talk about the units that will be featured on it, at least in the first instance when it comes up. Which will be Tamano, Tamamo Lancer and Helena. I literally just looked at Helena. So this one should be really easy, as I quickly tell you about Helena. Helena is an archer. She has two quick, two arts, one buster. First skill is Summer Vacation A+, charges party's MP gauge, and then gain crit five crit stars for every turn for five turns. On a cooldown of eight and 20% NP, not great <laughs> is a nice way of putting it. Uh, Nyarf B, increases on damage by five attacks, five turns, reduces one enemy's MP gauge by one. The damage increase is 2,000 on the cooldown of 6. Uh, at least this is a 100% chance of reducing the MP gauge of an enemy, which is nice. Um, the Colonel's Summer Vacation B increases on Art's performance for 1 turn and then grants itself a debuff immunity for 1 time for 5 turns. Again, not the greatest ratios in the world. Art's up 40%, cooldown of 5. This is actually a pretty solid skill if this was not for a single turn and this was not 1 time only and it was maybe 3 times. Uh, or just in permanent, just a grant her a debuff immunity for five turns. Who cares? It's Helena. It's fine. Give it to her. She deserves it. You know, it will last the entire cooldown, so we'll fit that. Her passive skills are Magic Resistance C and Independent Action C. The third skill is the Anti Archer Attack Damage Aptitude, because trust no one, not even yourself or your friend Tesla. Uh, her Noble Phantasm, after the upgrade, is a Sonic Kamara Wheel, which is the Venetian God Silver Taurus. Hits four times, deals damage to all enemies, it is arts, um, it deals 600% damage at MP level 1, and if you get it to MP level 5, it's 900%. Reduces their debuff resistance for three turns, reduces their defense for three turns, and then charges party's MP gauge. The debuff resistance is 10%, the defense down is 10%, and the, the MP increase is 10%, and if you can charge it up it, all the way to the final level, it's 30% for debuff and the defense down, and then 20% for MP. Yeah, okay. Sure. Not... If you are, in theory, looping a whole bunch against a, maybe a challenging quest where there's a bunch of dudes there, that reduction of defense over time can kind of kind of be useful. But for the most part, I think Helen is kind of weirdly stuck in being a support unit that is not 100% great at supporting in this current environment. Um, as you can see here, they've kind of made some strives in increasing her NP to make her a little bit more support-focused support, for support focus when she actually shoots off the NP. Um, but this skill is just too old, and this skill is just too old, and this skill is too old. Um, if you want to see, if you want to use a more support-focused Hela, uh, Helena, you should just use, 
the regular caster Helena, who does a lot of what this unit does, but better. Um, there she is. The only thing that's different is that I believe she is story locked, if I remember correctly. No, she's just always in there, so you should. There's almost no reason not to use her. Uh, you can see here, this is a tune up to her. The party's MP gauge was 20% on a cooldown of 7. Um, the Mahatna Kier charges her own MP gauge by 30%, so she's already giving herself 50% just from this unit alone. And then it increased the party's uh, Quick Arts and Buster, which is 20% for 3 turns. And then Snowball Phantasm does something similar, where it does a reduction of defense, critical attack chance, and debuff resistance. And I feel like this ends up being a little bit more useful in those kind of challenge quest type of scenarios, because having a crit chance being removed, maybe having a way to debuff resist them is also pretty nice, and same thing goes for the de defense reduction and stuff like that. Also, this also can ignore defensive buffs as well when it's being used, which can help because she is a caster, so she's doing less damage usually. But the other thing is this Helena is also easier to get, so I feel like it's easier for actually get this one to MP5, so you could be doing more damage that way. Either way, what I'm trying to say here is that this regular Archer Helena could use just a little bit more work to maybe fine-tune her a little bit more to be like her caster version, because yeah, this skill, the one turn increase in cooldown because you get five more crit stars, that ain't it, man. Even if it does last for five turns, come on, that's nothing. <laughs> And I think this skill has, on occasion, can be pretty useful, but then you run into the issue of, like, so increasing your damage by 2,000 comes at the cost of being unable to reduce an enemy's MP gauge, and then this leaves after you do 5 attacks. So, not the greatest. <laughs> not the greatest, but I do like Helena, because she also has a weird, like, 5Ds motorcycle, and I think that's pretty cool. Next, Tomo Lancer. This is Tomomo Lancer. She is Tomomo, but in Lancer form in summer, summer, and she's let go of every single ambition that she's ever had. Um, she has two quicks, one arts, two buster. Her first skill is the Beach Flower EX, an increase the party's attack for three turns, and then an increase of crit star generation rate for male allies for three turns on a cooldown of five. Her second skill is the Midsummer Witchcraft A, a charm to one enemy for one turn, reduces their defense for three turns, inflict curse for five turns to them, and then the demerit is they charge their MP gauge by one. 30% uh, defense down, curse damage up a thousand, and a cooldown is of seven. Um, her third skill is the Goddess Metamorphosis Sky A, which I literally just read off, but I'll read it again, because uh, I didn't read everything. Grant self invincibility for one turn. Uh, increases on critical damage for three turns, increases on crit star generation rate for three turns, increases on MP generation rate, debuff resistance, and healing for one turn, and then charges on MP gauge as well. The tick crit damage increase is 50%, the star rate up is 50%, the MP rate up is 50%, the debuff resistance is 50%, and the heal rate is 50%, and the MP gauge is 30%, and the cooldown of 6. And the stun has been removed, which is a big, big improvement. Um, from what this used to do and you can see that everything kind of stayed the same But the thing that they because of the time that she was released You couldn't give a unit this many good buffs at a in a succession without having some kind of demerit So it's good for them to eventually realize We can get rid of that now <laughs> It's okay it won't break the game um, Writing a territory creation a and divinity a plus plus is her are her uh, skills passive skills her third skill is an anti-berserker attack damage aptitude, because tr no, trust no one, not even one of your tails. Her noble phantasm is, I'm not even going to try it, everlasting summer sun sunlight, sunshade parasol of master's most favorite deity. Rank C, noble phantasm, it's anti-unit, it's buster, it deals damage to one enemy. The damage is 600% at level 1, and if you get her to all the way to MP level 5, it's 1,000. And then she has a overcharge effect, which deals extra damage to male enemies. 150% at charge level 1, and 200% at the final level. And that is Tomomo Lancer. Tomomo Lancer is fantastic for fighting any boss fight that literally has a man in it. <laughs> she will be great at taking that man down. Um... The 150% obviously will come in pretty clutch in most scenarios. This skill is amazing. That's why uh, Maeve is so good in writer form. Because she just absolutely eats up any man that she fights with that 150% extra damage on her Noble Phantasm. And she's single target and she's buster. So she can also be used with the other Tomomo, which is Vich. 
you know, <laughs> everyone's favorite uh, Tomomo in quotes bitch. Um, they can be used together. It's a cooldown of six, so you'll be able to get it back pretty quickly. Uh, the second skill is the only one that you won't be able to get back very quickly, but that's okay because you should not be spamming this move. The charge to the MP gauge of the enemy is pretty bad, and especially if you're fighting an enemy that can't be charmed, that's also pretty rough. Um, but, but there are ways around this. Obviously, if they're about to shoot their MP at you, you can attempt to charm them, and they'll increase their MP gauge, but they're already at max, so what does it matter at that point? The reduction of defense is pretty nice. It's one of those wins where you have to kind of plan it out pretty much in advance. And the nice thing is, is that she does come in with a built-in grand self-invincibility, so as long as they don't tear that down, you should be able to tank their NP. Uh, you can run into a little bit of problems if you're running a double Vich setup, but I think for challenging quests, it would probably be smarter to run maybe a singular Vich and a, maybe a Merlin. It depends on whether or not you're using Oberon. It might actually be better to use Himiko. <laughs> uh, uh, based off of our challenge quest videos that we've done, uh, Himiko came in pretty damn clutch every time we used her, so I think she's a solid 50% buster uh, unit, and then that will also increase your overcharge damage as well. Um, and I guess you can also use um, the nurse as well. You can use Nightingale, because Nightingale also gives 50% to um, Buster. The reason I'm hesitant on saying Merlin, even though I think Merlin is a good choice for challenge quests, is that you can't use it with Oberon, and Oberon can really clutch up a, um, a fight if it's at the end, and you just need that final burst of damage. Um... Yeah, see. Increase the party's buster performance. It's 30% in MP level 1, excuse me. If you get it to MP level 5, it's a full 50%, which in that case, that's insane if you do that. But to compensate, you do get crit damage after you use this Noble Phantasm, and the overcharge effect can make up for the fact that you're not getting the full 50% from it. Like I said, it can still be really solid in a lot of cases, and she has a bunch of other supports as well. Anyway, that's now I'm talking about Himiko. I think Himiko is a great unit. Use Himiko if you can have her. Um such a cool cool ass unit that they made <laughs> anyway lancer i think is a really cool unit she's a tomomo i think all the tomomos for the most part are pretty usable yeah all of all of them are Vitches is both coin skya of light and darkness which is one of the uh, a light is a vich i believe um every single one of them are pretty damn usable in some kind of way even cat who is a four star you can use her for farming purposes is if you, if you know how to do it and this summon can be used in single a uh, single play a uh, single player challenge quest type content as long as it's fighting against a man which can be pretty useful uh any kind of man as long as they're not saber um and especially if they are a archer she will be doing pretty good damage on them the only thing you have to watch out for is that if it is an archer their noble phantasm stuff is at a third three turn cooldown so if they have a way to, like I said, this is the one move where you have to like think about it a little bit and kind of weigh your. Obviously, if they are charm deep, uh, charm immune, that'd be a big pain in the ass. So think carefully before using it. And yeah, this skill right here could use maybe a buff at some point. Because um, like I said, a lot of the summer units had this weird increased male allies stuff for whatever reason. I think all of them have beach flower. No, not all of them. But they have the ability to increase crit star generation rate a whole bunch, so that's where that kind of comes from. And that is the first two units being released with this, um, that should be releasing when this releases. And I will make videos for the other ones at a later time. Um, probably tomorrow, just to make sure that when I'm crazy busy with work that, uh, when they start releasing these banners, I have these videos prepared over the weekend. But yeah, this is the Go Learning with Manga collaboration. Uh, it should lead up to the actual event itself. Because you can see here, this one went from April 20th to May 4th. And then this one started on April uh, April 27th, so, so a week later. I think that Bunyan is likely to launch on my birthday. Which would be a Saturday on April 20. Um, probably on the 19th. So I actually probably would expect the Learning with Manga collaboration to release Friday. It's either going to be released at day roll from when I release this video, which is Thursday, uh, Thursday the 11th, or on the 12th. One of those two days. And then a week from now will be the 19th, and that's when the game will enter maintenance. Right? Does that make sense? Because this ends on the 27th. 
And this starts on the 27th. So actually, no, I take that back. When the fuck does uh, the Trome sisters leave? I should have looked at that. That ends on April 18th. So that means that Bunyan's on the 19th. No, that doesn't make any sense. They should have been released now. This is very confusing. <laughs> the, 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 that means that it probably is going to happen on day roll today when you hear this video. I sure hope that that happens. It's really weird that it comes out this way as I'm like trying to figure out like, yo, when the hell does this actually happen? So the Bunyan event should be on the 18th. So that means I don't have to do summons on my birthday. I do get to do it beforehand and experience the, uh, the heartbreak live there. <sighs> Looking forward to it. But yeah, for the most part, if you are asking, hey, what's my advice? In general, you probably should not be summoning on any of these banners. We have Anniversary coming up, unless you love these characters. If you love Vich, you love Da Vinci, and you know someone who loves Da Vinci, you should go for them. But otherwise, you should wait for Anniversary, because Anniversary and Summer are going to be pretty crazy this year. And if you don't care about Anniversary or Summer, live free, my man. I don't know what you're summoning for. My For the free... My, my dude. There you go. That's better. Gender neutral. My dude. That's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. You guys have a good day. Have a good night. And I wish you the best if you do end up summoning. Peace out. Goodbye.